Hey there internets, Nelson here with another short tutorial video on how to create a dynamic slider. So what I mean is if you ever account encountered a, a project where you're like, okay, I need a slider component and then in each slide needs to come from a Webflow collection. But I also want to give the ability for my clients to add another slide or remove slides or change around slides. Um, on their own through the CMS editor or through the Webflow collection. Now with the Webflow native slider component, that is not possible, but I will show you another way to do it. So let's go into the tutorial. All right, here we go. So this is a blank page. The only thing that I have is a, a sample blog post collection with a bunch of sample data. And I have a section with a padding at the top and bottom and a container. So next, usually people would go to the add panel and drag in a slider component. Nope, don't do that. We're not using that. What we're gonna do is use something else. So let's go ahead and drag in our collection list and let's pull our data from blog posts. I'm going to drag in an image into one of the CMS items, pull the image from thumbnail and we're done with our structure. Next, uh, there's this one uh, carousel called Slick by Ken Wheeler. And uh, it says, the last carousel you'll ever need. Okay, cool. Um, I like it. I used it for a client project recently and I'm like, okay, yeah, this helped me. Uh, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is go to get it now, view on GitHub, and in there will be two lines of code that we need. So we need the CSS. So I'm going to just uh, copy this line, go to my Webflow project, uh, pages panel, page settings, and in the head tag, paste that first line. For the second line, we need the magical JavaScript that makes it happen. We'll paste that there. And uh, lastly, we need the actual thing that uh, we, we need the code that initiates it, All right? So let's go ahead and get that one. Uh, here we go. Let me just copy this. And so what we're gonna do is, oop, there we go. Script, end script, and in there, whoa, what happened? There we go. There we go. So I'm going to replace your element with the class name that I'm going to give my collection list. So I'm going to say din-list. So that's dyn-list. And you can name it whatever you want. It's up to you. But yeah, so I'm going to copy that. And this is the script that says, hey, if you find a, if you find a class name of din-list, make that a carousel. So that's what this line means, all right? So let's go ahead and save it. And now I'm gonna to go to my navigator right here. And I wanna set that same class name to the collection list, okay? This one right here, not the wrapper, but the collection list. Because what the JavaScript is doing is saying, hey, are there any divs inside of this um, din list? Um, if so, make that, uh, a uh, make that a carousel, make that a carousel slide, All right? So I'm gonna go here paste in my selector name and publish. That's it. That's it. It's now a carousel. Don't believe me? Check it out. All right. Now here's some cool things about this. All right. Let's go even deeper. Let's go, let's get fancy with it, all right? Let's drag in a grid. And let's remove one of the call, uh, one of the rows. And let's go ahead and put the image inside of the grid. So now it's two columns. And in the second column, let's go ahead and put in some, uh, actually, let's put a paragraph. Uh, let's put a heading. Yeah, we're gonna put a heading. And we're gonna say H2, get from the name. And let's also put a 
Oh, we, let's put a paragraph as well. So I'm going to put in a paragraph. Ooh, now, oh, I forgot to put a div. I have to wrap this in a divs to be the second column. There we go. All right, so what I did was I have my first column has the image. My second column has a div, which holds the pieces of text. So that way it's one row, two columns, all right? And let's copy and paste that three times. And we're going to pull this text from post summary. And what I'm trying to show you is that they have uh, these different blog posts have different heights because they have different, um, different numbers of characters in that text. And so one thing that the Webflow uh, slider component can do is adaptive height. So if I go here, notice that the height, the, the, the next button is always in the same spot. All right. And so the height of the carousel doesn't match the height of the content no matter what. And so what we need to do is play around with the settings on Slick. And so it has things like adaptive height. So what I can do is copy that setting, go to my code and add some settings. So I'm gonna add curly brace right there. And then I can say adaptive height equals true. All right, and there we go. Let's go ahead and save it, publish. And sometimes you want, you know, your slider to grow tall or to grow, uh, get shorter, depending on the content. But there we go. Notice how the next went down. Now it's up. See that? Yeah. So this will push down any content below it or push it up depending on how tall this is. All right. Now, I know some of you are um, designers and you might be thinking, but I don't like the next and the previous. I don't like how they look. Well, uh, the next and previous, the, the arrows, the previous arrow and the next arrow, their default to be buttons. And they have a class of slick preview, uh, previous and slick next. So slick prev and slick next. And so all you have to do is drag in, um, drag in, say, a div block, and give it a same class name, slick prev, and style that accordingly. Like, say, I want that to have a background color of. Uh, black and I want the borders to be rounded like by three and I want to add margin on all sides something like that right and then I'm gonna copy and paste and duplicate that to be slick next all right and so if that's the style that I want Let's go ahead and preview. And there we go, I have that style. Those styles are done. Or you can add an arrow um, inside of it using their settings. So um, yeah, so your, you have arrows is true. Um, you can change the HTML for the arrows if you don't want button, you can do like image or something. And how to do this, for example, here, let me show you. Let me copy that and say for the next button, it's going to be next arrow. Let me go here. So comma. So comma means, hey, I have other. I have, um, sorry, I have other settings that I want to use. So I can say next arrow. And then use single quote. There we go. And I can say this will be that. It'll be uh, one of those arrows, a greater than sign. All right. And then save. And let's change this slick next to have some padding inside. Have a size of like 50. And make sure that the content in it is white. 
publish, and refresh. And so there you go. I have my arrow right there. And so I'm using these two as a placeholder to write my CSS. And even if I delete them, my CSS will still be saved in the project. It's just I don't see it. And so there you go. And then you can also place this wherever. But uh, there you go. There's a little bit about Slick. There's more things you can play with, like um, all these settings right here. You can play with autoplay. You can play with accessibility. So you can um, turn, well, leave accessibility on. It's default to true, which is good. But there's so many things to play with here. So try it out for yourself. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, leave those questions in the comments below. But another thing I want to show you real quick before we end this stream is, uh, where is it? Okay, pause on hover. This is something you can't do with the Webflow uh, uh, native uh, slider component. So this is uh, on by default. So that's really cool. So when you put your um, mouse on top of a slide while it's doing the autoplay, it'll pause. And then once you take your mouse away, it'll play again. So play around with this. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next tutorial video. And as always, wait, there we go. <laughs> and as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.